Hello everyone and welcome to another Ecognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a really nice algorithm <clears throat> that I actually never used that often before but after this video I promise you you're gonna use it as well. I'm gonna use it as well. It's really cool and it's called find domain extrema and this algorithm finds uh, extreme values minimum or maximum that you define in the domain. Here's a definition that you'll find in the reference book. So what does it do? It allows to identify areas that fulfill a maximum or minimum condition within the defined domain according to an image object feature. So you can choose any feature that the condition provides and use this in defined domain extrema. Let's say in this example you want to find the longest image object. That's no problem with the find domain extrema algorithm. So in this case, it would be that long one, right? You also could say, all right, I'm looking for the next slide, smallest. And looking for the smallest would be this image object down here. And one last example, find the brightest. It would be a different one. So we're using the brightness feature. And is there another one? The largest, all right. So the largest would be that one on top right corner based on the feature area of a single image object. Okay, let's um, have a look at the use case, enough of theory. What do I have here? I have a DTM uh, and I did already a segmentation and that looks like uh, isolines. Is that the right term in English? I think so. And what I want to do now is simply find the highest image object of my image objects on this level. And I'm simply going to use this find domain extrema algorithm. And here you see in the domain, we're working on image object level, level one. That's the stuff that you see on the left hand side. And the extrema settings, uh, so the algorithm parameters are more interesting so you can uh, define an extrema type, minimum or maximum, then the feature that you're looking at. In our case, we are looking at the mean DTM. So the elevation of the terrain, but you could use all the features provided here within the cognition. And another important setting is the accept equal extrema. You can set it to yes or no. If it's set to yes and you have equal extrema, both gonna be, or all of them gonna be classified. If you set it to no, only one will be classified. Let's execute this and I do not see anything going on. So I'm gonna show you a trick how you could find a hidden classified image object. You can open the object table and in this case I'm already displaying my maximum class and unclassified. So you can depict here what classes and what features you wanna have displayed in the image object table. And now I actually can click it and it will be highlighted and it will also center it in the view. So if you're in another area uh, and you click it here in the image object table, it will zoom to that selected image object. Uh, okay, so the next one is find domain extrema as well. And here we're simply gonna go for the minimum. So we have both the minimum maximum and we're gonna put it into that class minimum, this image object. So minimum is black, maximum is white. And now it also appears here in the image object table and it's right at the top, uh, top right border of my image. And that's how you can use this to get the highest and the lowest image object in your image object level. Let's delete our classes and have a look at other settings. So again here we can check it in the edit process process window or in the process property window on the right hand side it's exactly the same and we simply changed the feature from DTM to area so in this case we want to look for the largest image object there we have it so that's fairly large and it actually looks like the largest one for me um, let's add this area feature here as well. So at the moment we only have in this table the mean DTM. 
but I'm gonna add the area and you see it here in pixels and the cool thing is here you can also sort it so right away you see the largest image objects with this very high number of pixels and it's classified as maximum after executing this find domain extrema process and algorithm so next one is simply finding the minimum so the smallest image object let's check that one and now you see that's an effect of the setting except equal extrema so we have quite a few that are only the size of one single pixel um, and they were all classified as minimum so that was a very generic example and use case uh, that might not be very helpful for you um, but you should get the idea how this fine domain extrema algorithm works now in this next example um, that might be more realistic or give you ideas how you can use it uh, in your rule sets so in this case we have an ndsm uh, so normalized uh, digital surface model which depicts the height of the features on the terrain so the elevation of buildings and so on and we also well, i loaded um, the outlines of the buildings of this city into this project and in pre-processing i simply did a segmentation based on the thematic layer and in this case again i'm gonna look for the highest building and the lowest building um, i don't see them after execution so let's all again use this image object table um, click on maximum I zoom in so it centers it so that's the minimum elevation of zero that might be an error in the thematic layer so you could improve that and this is the highest one 34 meters um, okay so that was more or less the same that we did at the beginning but let's assume you have different districts in your city and you want to detect the highest and lowest building in each district how would that look like hmm. interesting question right um, i'm going to show that to you in the next minute so these are my districts here that you see on the top pane these yellow areas so i have three different districts and i want to have for each district the maximum and the minimum uh, so the highest building and the lowest building so what I do here, um, what's very important is that you have this uh, structure of child and parent processes. Um, and I'm telling here, let's go back to this first one, find highest image objects. So I'm telling here in this parent process, look at level two and image objects and on the class district. So that's one level higher then level one level two we have the districts and level one we have the buildings and in this parent process i say all right look at level two my districts and in the process in the child process within this parent process i'm telling ecognition look at one level below that's the building level level one and check there within this district for the highest and the lowest building and it's important now that in the child process you set the domain let's check that one so the scope to sub objects so it's looking at the sub objects of the districts the class filter is building so it's looking at the buildings on level one the super objects is level two and there it's going to look for the extrema type maximum of the dsm and classifies that as maximum class so this structure allows you to set constraints in the or define the domain on a super level and then it applies these child processes to each image object defined in the domain of the parent process okay i'm gonna execute this one and you should see that we have more than one green building which are classified as maximum and this parent process is doing the same as uh, the one before is just simply classifying the minimum buildings and you already see that with i see three green buildings uh, three green buildings um, but yeah using the image object table makes life easier so you see here with three minimum building buildings and you also see them highlighted in the top pane 
and also bottom pane we have also three maximum buildings so for each district and using this parent and child child process structure allows you to actually go deeper into the capabilities of recognition and create such interesting analysis uh, approaches all right so that was it recognition deconstructed deconstructing this uh, fine domain extrema algorithm i hope you enjoyed it here next time.